Today's scripture is on page 1381 of your hymn, hymn, your pew Bibles. It's Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. And if there are times that when I am reading from the scripture that it doesn't quite match up, I am reading from the New American Standard, not the NIV. And I think that it's not even the NIV that we have in the pew Bibles. So, But the word of God is still... The Word of God. This is Paul to the Romans. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's interesting. When I did, when we had the message last week, it was supposed to be a part one to part two, the nature of God and nature. And throughout the week, it didn't quite work out that way. So as I was preparing the message, it was not the audible, don't do this. It was more about, there's something else that we need to talk about. Those weeks that you have, those days that you have, Again, where you just, you feel like you've just been running in place. You feel like that gerbil on the wheel. You've been going 100 miles an hour, but you didn't get anything done. You didn't accomplish anything. You thought that, why did I even wake up today? And then sometimes you have weeks like that. And sometimes you just think that that's what it's going to be like. You think that's the normal. So as... I was praying and reading, and I'm trying to stay on this path that I told you about last week. It just wasn't working out. The Lord impressed upon me, Romans is one of my favorite books in the New Testament. And you look into it, and it's talking about the things that we're dealing with now. The things... In the Bible it says, there is no temptation or trial which is common, but which is common to man. There is nothing going on in the world today that wasn't going on in the world 2,000 years ago. The only thing that changes is how people present themselves. Now granted, they did not have the technology that we have today, but that just means it's quicker to spread. So many times... When we come together as a family of God, there are needs that may not be spoken. But through the Spirit, it's very, very evident. I titled this, A New Mind, A New Heart, A New Spirit. When sharing with the children uh, at Providence this morning, I took a piece of paper. And I asked each one of them to rip it a little bit. And I asked him, I said, after, this is still the same piece of paper. But because of our actions, it'll never be the same. Just as when you say something to somebody, whether it's out of anger or whether you're hurt or it's just a very emotional situation, and you say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that I'd take that back. Once you say something, you cannot take it back. You can apologize. You can repent. You can ask for forgiveness, but what you say is out there. So as I was, I was reading, and it just kept, just kept impressing upon me about, we are new when we come to Christ. We don't add Jesus to our resume. We don't clean up our act and then say, we'll come to God. I've heard so many times People that I'll be talking to them about Jesus or I'll be talking about God's grace and they'll say, well, you know what? I got some things in my life I need to clean up and then I'll come to church. No, that's not how it works. God 
is there to make you a new creation. A new creation. He doesn't want to fix you. How many times have you heard of relationships out there where the man or the woman is seeing somebody and they say, you know what, I think I can fix them. We used to call that the stray dog syndrome. Because the relationships people would have is because they want to fix somebody. You're not there to fix anybody. You're not even there to fix yourself. God does not want to fix you. God wants to make you a new creation. Now you start with the mind. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30, it says, It is because of him, the Holy Spirit, that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us the wisdom of God. That is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. Until the Holy Spirit impresses upon you, your mind, that you're a sinner, you sin. When the Holy Spirit, whether it's through a song, whether it's through a scripture, whether it's through a service, until you realize that everything you do hurts God, you, you're just ignorant and you're blissful in your ignorance. Children, you don't have to teach them to be stingy. You don't have to teach them to lie. You don't have to teach them to disobey. It is in the sinful nature of human beings. Period. Now, that being said, in the Jewish tradition, there is the bat mitzvah and the bar mitzvah. This is the coming of age for the children. They would come up and they would stand before the congregation or in the synagogue and they would read scripture. They had to have it memorized. And even today, they have to still do it in the Hebrew language. At that point in time, they are considered adults. That is what they call the age of accountability. That before that time, they were just children. They didn't know any better. And they felt that if they passed away at, before the age of accountability, they would just automatically go to heaven because they did not know. In today's world, with the technology, with the availability of the scriptures, there are some that, at a very early age, know the scripture and know, know better. Then we do know that there are those, whether it's a medical condition or whatever, that will never know right from wrong. The, the whole thing is that what we're looking at is that when it comes to knowing right and wrong, when God says you're a sinner and it's impressed and you know it, you're accountable. So God wants to renew our minds. He wants to give us a different way to think. For me, I was a huge fan of, you know, there were superhero movies. And I still struggle not going to an MCU, Marvel, Avengers, Endgame movie. Because that, that attraction was still there. But in the renewing of my mind, I know that there are things that are inappropriate. Why do I expose my mind? Why do I expose my heart to things that's going to corrupt it? Why would you once, you, once you've come to know Christ, why would you put yourself in the same situation that you would sin? Now, some people say, well, you know, Jesus ate with sinners. Jesus dined with tax collectors. I understand that. Also understand, he was without sin. He is without sin. We need to love the sinner. But we don't need to sin with the sinner. There have been, and in the mind and in the heart, because it is really close together, because with, out of the heart, is what speaks what you speak. But it first starts in your mind. That's why Jesus said, a man who looks upon a woman with lust has sinned to the point of, he might as well have committed adultery. That comes from your mind. When you allow the Holy Spirit to renew, make new your mind, does that wipe out the thought processes that you had before? No. It does not. But you're aware of what hurts God. You're aware of where the sin lies. 
you are aware. And awareness is where your accountability comes in. And it's not a rules of yes or no. It's when you have somebody, think about when you had that first love in your life. That first time you had somebody that you were like, I I just cannot wait to see this person. I want to be in their presence. I just want to hang out with them. You wouldn't do anything to hurt them. You go out of your way to not hurt them. But we don't do that for our Heavenly Father. When we find ourselves in situations, we can either A, stand up for our Father, or fall into the trap that's in front of us. When you are going through things in life, and you're in a situation, you hear that inappropriate joke, and they start laughing. And because of your nature of not wanting to hurt their feelings, you laugh along with it. You are a silent testimony, silent approval. I was given a note today. I want this is an appropriate time to share it. It says, My neighbor's Bible. I am my neighbor's Bible. He reads me when we meet. Today he reads me in my house, tomorrow in the street. He may be a relative or a friend, or a slight acquaintance be. He may not know even my name, yet he is reading me. When we are out there, and we are professing that we are a Christian, we are renewing our mind, the way you think changes. I know that when I... I'm, the mind and the heart are so intertwined. When you are out there in the world, the world comes against you every second of every day. If you think about it, what radio stations, if I go out to your cars right now and I hit the radio station presets, what am I going to find? Okay? That's between you and God. I, don't, I, don't, I Personally, you listen to what you want to listen to. What are you putting in your mind when you first get up? What are you putting in your mind before you go to bed? I challenge you to listen to at least two, I'll just use the word Christian songs, before you go to bed, and look how you sleep. I would also caution you don't use electronics an hour before you go to bed, because it kind of messes with your sleep. I know. I fall into that trap all the time. In Philippians 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. It's so easy to look at the world today and find faults. Last week I talked briefly about what the church has been going through. About the openly gay wanting to be ordained. And as I, I believe I shared last week, this is something that is nothing is new. They have been trying to do this for over 40 years. The reason why it was probably a big deal last year is because it was just another attempt. The last time they tried it, another attempt. Now, do not be mistaken. Homosexuality is a sin, plain and simple. It's a choice. Adultery is a sin. It is a choice. Addictions to pornography, blah, 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 sin. It's not the person. It is the action. And it starts in the mind and goes to the heart. So when we are dealing with, with this situation, when they, they wanted to be ordained, that is no different than having, and I, I'm sure I mentioned this, if you had a known practicing pedophile, do you want them as your youth leader or as your pastor? should be a resounding no. Now, is a pastor pure? No. Do we have to deal with sin? Yes. But the one thing that has to be done is has to be repentance and pursuit in Philippians 4.8. Whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever is excellent, think on these things. 
Think on these things. Now, as we, we move over from, the, just keep that in, in mind, <laughs> the mind in the mind, move to the heart, being a living sacrifice. Your heart, that's your passion. That's what drives you. That's what your emotion comes from. If you have something you're passionate about, whether it's hunting, fishing, whether it is crafts of any kind, you talk to my brother-in-law and you mention the word rug, rug hooking or wool, he will talk your ear off for an hour. It is, it is his passion. Out of your heart is what, you're, what, what comes from, out of your mouth is what comes from your heart. When you are in emotional situations, and again, like I said earlier, you say something inappropriate, that's what's in your heart. People don't want to think that, you know, well, they hit me, so I hit them back. They made me do it. No, you wanted to do it. When Jesus said to turn the other cheek, he was talking literally. When people hurt you, don't hurt them back. When you're a Christian, it means that, guess what? I do what my father wants me to do. Do you remember back when you were young? Do you remember back when, if somebody ever said anything bad about your dad, how you just wanted to tear into them like there's no tomorrow? You wanted to defend your father's honor, his name. Go back even further. There, in the medieval times, if you, t- if you spoke badly about the king, that's tantamount of treason, you would be put to death. Regardless of what kind of king they were, they defended their king. They defended their father. Why don't we defend our Father? Why don't we defend what God has put in our hearts? As you have repented in the mind, the heart gets changed. The heart gets renewed. How many of you have been hurt by love? How many of you felt that sting of betrayal? How many times? When you, when you let God renew your heart, your heart gets bigger and bigger And bigger. And you know what normally happens? People get hurt. And you know what happens after that? Our old ways want to jump back in and put a wall up, keep people at arm's length, and say, never again. I find myself sometimes struggling with that when I'm hurt. I'm when my kids break my heart. When my kids do things that, I mean, whether they just lie straight up to me or if they have addictions. It breaks my heart. Does it mean I love them any less? No. But what it does mean is that I have to remember, I am going to love this much. I know I'm going to get hurt, but I can't stop loving. Because when I think about wanting to stop loving, the Holy Spirit goes, how many times have you broke my heart? How many times have you gone astray? How many times have you had the opportunity to love me in front of people, but you didn't do it? How many times have you had that opportunity to share my love with somebody, but you didn't do it? Maybe because they're not the same skin color. Maybe they're not the same denomination. Maybe they're just not the same kind of person you are. They're a farmer. I am not. I like technology. They don't. We find excuses for not talking to people. We find excuses for not loving people. It says in Scripture, love covers a multitude of sins. Why are we covering sins? Well, number one, we can't forgive sin. We can forgive people for what they do. The sin is between them and God. If you have somebody that sins against you, oh wait, something in the Lord's Prayer says something about that. We forgive those who trespass against us. Do you? Do you allow your heart to be that big? Do you allow the renewing of your heart to forgive and to love those that have hurt you? It's okay to disagree. You know, I like vanilla ice cream. My wife does not. Actually, she does, just for 
example's sake. I like sweet tea. My wife drinks lemon water. I drink lemon water only when I have to. Disagreeing, having a different point of view does not make you a bad person. Now, if you're trying to say something that's not scripturally accurate, that's a different point of contention. But your heart is there to love, to forgive, to share, to be a shoulder, to be a hug. I've, I have no apologies for being a hugger. Is it is I don't want to say it is actually scriptural. I mean, it talks about you know embracing and you know, and, and greet everybody with a holy kiss and everything, but shaking hands and hugging is my way of saying I I'm here. I love you. I really do. How many times have you shaken the hand, or what I like to call the monkey hug, where you just kind of reach over, reach over and just kind of pat each other on the back a little bit? You know it's not genuine. You know it's not real. Or you get that handshake and it's just like grabbing a wet dish towel. You know, if you're going to love, love. Scripture says, let your yes be yes, let your no be no. Also says, be hot or be cold, because if you're lukewarm, he's going to spew you out of his mouth. Your heart is your passion. Romans 10.10 10 says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. When you are professing with your mouth what's in your heart, people know who you are. They know what you stand for. You don't have to say, I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat. You don't have to say that I like fishing or I like hunting or I like sports or I like whatever. Because your speech is going to profess that quickly. When everything that comes out of your mouth is Remington and Winchester, they know you like to hunt. When everything you talk about is loving people, helping people. Earlier we were talking about Pete being in the hospital. You want to talk about somebody with heart? That man took his truck with a trailer from here all the way, if you know where the airport is in Franklin, all the way there just to move a refrigerator about a mile. That's heart. Did it just because it needed to be done. He loves because... He loves. Now, are any of us perfect? Do any of us ever have a bad day? Yeah. I'm sure if we all was to take a tally, we have more bad days than good days. That's the way it's supposed to be. Because without the bad days, you don't learn grace. You don't learn mer- you don't learn mercy. If you look at the TV nowadays, you got Match.com, you've got Farmers Only, you've got 55 Plus, you've got what, what, uh, eHarmony. You've got all these, well, we have 15,000 different ways to match you up to the perfect person. That's not what God intended. God intended to put somebody in your life, your spouse, your mate, should not be just like you. Should there be overlaps and commonalities? Absolutely. What? That's what brought you together. But if you always agreed, you never learned mercy. You never learned grace. You never learned what real love is all about. That agape love. That love that, that just says, I will die for you. I may not always agree with you, but that's okay. Because if I don't agree with you, I get to learn something. I get to become a better person because of you. If my bride were here right now, I would be embarrassing her to no end. Because I could go on and on on how the things that she challenges me on that makes me a better person. We are put on this earth to make each other better. To love each other. Now, when it comes to the Spirit, this is where most people want to put up their hands and say, okay, I'm good with the first two, I don't need the third one. In Isaiah, it says, 11, chapter 2, 
the spirit of the Lord will rest on you. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and the fear of our Lord. When you allow the spirit to renew you, first the mind, followed by the heart into the spirit. That's when you can look at somebody and go, Jan, are you okay? What's going on? Some of, you, some of you do it already and don't even realize it. You'll come up to me and say, I think something's wrong with so-and-so. They're just, something's just not right. Whether it's the way they're acting or whether it's the way they're, they're holding themselves, their body, their, their body language, whatever. The problem is, is that we'll see it and we'll go, oh, they're okay. It's just Pete. It's just Robin. Whatever. And you, you shun the Spirit. When you shun the Spirit, you shun your opportunity to love. You shun that opportunity to be able to say, you know, I was reading this scripture the other day. I don't know, what do you think about this? One of my favorites is uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord and lean not unto your own understandings. Because if you look at what God knows in His knowledge and compare that to our knowledge, I mean, take the most brilliant person in the world and their knowledge would be like a speck of pepper in a sea of sand compared to God. God sees everything. God knows everything. There was a passionate discussion earlier this week that I had with an individual that said that God created man knowing he was going to fall because God knows everything. Okay, I, I understand where they're getting this concept, but they're in error. God created man to have communion with him. God created man and woman so they would have each other. So the three, mankind, womankind, and God, would have perfect fellowship. Did man fall? Yes. But God's will for what he created will happen. Because man fell, God always made a way. Because man fell, God already had a plan. God's will will be done. God's spirit wants to involve all of us. So many times at work, I'll, I'll say, you know, the Cranberry Harbor Freight train is getting ready to leave the station. All of you have a ticket, but it's up to you to get on board. God's the same way. God is not a dictator. God is not going to say, you will do this. When we had the Ten Commandments, it was say, here are the guidelines. First it was one, just don't eat from the tree. Then there was ten, here are the Ten Commandments. Then there were hundreds, because guess what? We kept rebelling. God wants us to have communion with Him. God wants to meet us where we are. The question is, do you? Do you want to meet with God? Do you want to be in His presence? Do you want to understand and feel the love that He has for you? Do you want to be, as I read earlier, that Bible for the world? Are you worried that we're just a little church and we can't, make it, we can't do anything? Wrong! Just as a pebble thrown into a lake ripples out, so does every interaction that you have with people. Why do you think scientists and doctors are so worried about pandemics? Especially in the higher, in the higher populated areas. One person that is sick can affect millions just by interaction. I interact with Jan. Jan inter interacts with somebody they know. And then those people interact with the people that they know. There used to be a, a shampoo commercial. Said, and she told her friend and their friends and their friends and their friends. And it just kept going. Why aren't we sharing the love of God with everybody we meet with? Why aren't we being Christ-like? Jesus didn't have houses. Jesus didn't have anything but what was on his back. But he never needed anything. We always confuse wants with needs. 
In all, in all honesty, how many of us remember when there were no cell phones? Hello? Yeah? How many of us remember we thought we were big when Dad put the 10-foot cord on the phone? I could walk around, and I could talk on the phone. Yep. Or if you, had, if you remember party lines, you had to pick up the phone. Okay, hey, can I have the phone here in about five minutes or so? Yeah, i got to make a call. Or when you were driving on a family trip. You're on a family trip. And, oh, yeah, there's no XM or Sirius radio. There's no CDs or DVDs. If you were high class, you had the auto-reversing cassette replayer. Or maybe the 8-track. <laughs> Making sure it's playing. But if you didn't have any of that, guess what you had to do? Cow counting? Punch bug? I spy with my eyes something that starts with the letter whatever. Distractions keep us from loving people. Distractions keep us from the love of God. Loving God. So many times, I, it just breaks my heart. When I, I mean, I, I catch myself doing it. Be a little bored. Look for one of my, uh, one, one of Paul Washer's podcasts. Instead of just going out in my backyard, maybe get, get in my hammock and just spend time with God. You don't always have to be doing something. But something always has to be done. Are you loving those around you? Are you reaching out to those that need to be reached out to? Whether it's a phone call, a card, just a hello on the street. How many times do you pass people and just give them a nod? That person may have needed, hey, how are you doing? Maybe that's all he needed. But we don't do it. I can't make people do things. If I could, I'd mess it up. That's just plain and simple truth. But opening up that heart and loving people. Love people. Renew your mind through the Holy Spirit. Open your heart. Have it renewed through the Holy Spirit. And finally, let your spirit be renewed through the Holy Spirit and commune with God. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you again it is such a privilege to stand here with my family, to thank them for their love, to thank you for your spirit. Your spirit is with us this morning, Father. Before I even walked in the building, you were here, communing, yearning for those to just reach out to slow down, to know you're here, and that your will will be done. But whether or not we're going to be a part of it is the free will that you've given us. And God, as we get ready to close with one final song, it is the song that you just say to us, we need to come to you just as we are. Because Lord, you already know what needs to be renewed, what needs to be, as we would say, fixed. But God, you have a plan for us, and we thank you for it. And Lord, go with us this week as we continue to grow closer to you. Let us become more Christ-like in everything we do. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Christ's name. Amen, amen, and amen.